Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So first thing I want to say, little disclaimer, if you can hear people shouting, I'm sorry, the walls are like this and my family is very noisy. I am ill at the moment, so if my voice sounds a little bit weird or I like end up just going <clears throat> over and over again, then that is why. In today's video, I'm gonna be basically walking you through how I apply to uni as an individual, which just means I didn't do it through college and I had to do it by myself. I figured I might as well do this video because maybe some of you guys are trying to apply for uni and going through the same stress as me and we can stress together. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through it. It'll be great, don't worry about it. So obviously the first thing you need to do is have some sort of mental breakdown and then decide that you either need to apply for uni or, you know, change your course. No, I'm kidding, that's not necessary, but you know, it can happen, so actual step one is deciding what course you want to do. This is probably actually the most important thing. I would know because I did a year of psychology and then had a mental breakdown and decided that I don't want to do that anymore. I think it's really important to try and think about what you want to do. So you can't base it on what other people think is good and what's going to sound good when people are like, what do you study? And you're like, hmm. I can't think of anything. Make sure that you pick something that you know you're gonna be interested in. The main things that I was interested in was um, game art, illustration with animation, animation, film studies, and graphic design. I later realized that you can't actually do game art this year, so that was off the table. So they were my options. I, I have fully decided to do an art project, so project an art degree step two is to try to get in contact with the university and in my case fail miserably but you know because obviously we are in the corona times so it's a lot harder to get in contact with people so it's a bit more of an individual process than usual which isn't great so i did try to ring the university so which i got a automated message basically just saying there's nobody in please email us but at this point I'd already sent them like three emails a week ago and nobody had answered so I basically spent a good 10 minutes psyching myself up for this phone call just for some robot to tell me that nobody's there to talk to me it wasn't helpful and I did kind of want to know if there's any way that I could just transfer from my uni to them without actually reapplying but I didn't get any answers so we are just going the, the uh, UCAS route which leads it on to step number three. Can we just talk about the fact that I just had the perfect opportunity for a smooth transition and I managed to mess it up so badly? What was that? Which leads it on to step number three, which is to set up a UCAS application. I think there are other ways to apply, but UCAS is definitely the easiest one, as far as I know anyway. I feel like it's a lot more intimidating than it was at college because at college you have all your friends and your teachers to help you make sure your application is proper. Whereas I'm sat there doubting everything that I've just typed out, like, did I spell my name right? Because it, I wouldn't put it past me to not do it. <laughs> I also had issue with the grades side of it because obviously I had to put in all my grades but because I'm not living at home at the moment I didn't actually have all my certificates with me. I did sort it out but you've just got to kind of be prepared to trust yourself a little bit. <laughs> so the next thing I had to worry about was getting a reference. I was kind of hoping that I'd be able to get a reference of just anybody that I knew but after looking into it you do actually have to have it by someone who was in charge of you at some point it either has to be a teacher or a manager or someone like that so I kind of shit myself I ended up contacting college and they thankfully got back to me and sent my reference the relief when they said that they'd give it me I was so happy I'm really annoyed though because I kind of really want to read it I want to know what my teacher wrote about me and I'll, I'll never know but the last thing that I had to do for you Cass was write out a personal statement and I was absolutely dreading this. I remember back in college it was the worst part. This this is what this has done to me. UCAS has really just thrown me back into college and I, I'm not living for it. I think the worst thing you can do is think about it too much because it is kind of easier once you get going. So that would honestly be my biggest piece of advice. If you write in a personal statement or anything like that just start it. Just like puke on the page and then pick out the gems I guess. So I'll tell you like what notes just in case you are actually writing a personal statement and if you are I'm sorry. So basically they say in the first paragraph you should talk about the course, why you want to do it, why it's important to you and like what you're going to bring to the course. 
The middle paragraph should be any skills that you have and any evidence that you have to support it. Then at the end, you've got your personal touch. So you tell them a bit about yourself, anything a bit, I guess, quirky or weird or anything that sort of makes you an individual. So I basically just talked about gaming, uh, the environment and animals and about my snails, so hopefully they think that's cute and not super weird. But yeah, uh, I've got like three main words down, so it's make sure that it's focused, relevant, and that it makes sense. That's basically what you've got to go on. So yeah, I actually just like wrote it all out on paper first. Everything has fallen apart, just like my life, but um, it was a lot easier this time around though. I remember it being a lot harder in college, but you know, you can do it. If you are writing a personal statement, I believe in you. <laughs> then step four, which won't apply to you unless you are applying for an art course, is to create a portfolio. So I was actually going to make a video entirely dedicated to this, but I figured I'd just include the other stuff as well. Okay, so when you're making your portfolio, you really need to figure out what they want from you because depending on what course you're doing, it will vary. So I'm applying for three different courses and all three of them want different things in your portfolio. So far, I've only done the illustration with animation one, so that's the one that I'll be going through and showing you at the end of this video. They said that I could have as many pieces as I want. That's not the case all the time. The two other courses that I'm applying for said that the limit is 20 pieces of work and if you put more than that I assume they'll just stop looking at it. Okay so the first thing that I had to do was go through all of my sketchbooks and see if I actually had anything worth putting in my bullet jet. My bullet jet. Oh my god I've completely lost my train of thought because of that. Okay, so I have now got some little post-it notes, um, courtesy of the NHS. So now I'm going to go through my sketchbook, starting with the oldest one and just sort of mark anything that I think might be worth putting in. This is where um, I go through everything and there's literally nothing in there and I leave with all of the post-it notes, but you know, let's just get into it. Yeah, so I accidentally deleted all of the footage of me actually taking pictures, so we're gonna look at this guy. I mean, I thought he looked like he was having fun, so <laughs> we're just gonna look at him. I feel like there's a lot of pressure to try and get the perfect photos, so really my only advice is to first of all take advantage of daylight, secondly make sure that the background that you're using is clean and isn't cluttered, and then finally I'd just say to try not to take it too seriously. As long as the photos have somewhat decent quality and they show your piece of work then you're probably doing okay. <laughs> I also forgot to mention that a scanner is also a pretty good option, so if you can't get good lighting or your camera is really bad but you also have access to a scanner then that might be the way to go. The things that they actually wanted to see in my portfolio were sketchbook and development. So that's like any sketchbook work, you know, showing how your ideas form, I guess. The second section they wanted was life drawing and observational drawings. So luckily I just did that life drawing class at uni, so I put my work in from there. And then I, I actually like stayed up all night painting this fucking fan like honestly i hate it i hate looking at it i hate it, it makes me angry <laughs> i don't know why like i feel like i just wanted to stay up all night playing fallout 4 and i ended up having to paint this fan for my portfolio so it was a bit upsetting for me apparently <laughs> third section was detailed detailed project pro detailed progress of a project. It said a current project on the actual website so I had to dig for this. I am planning a sort of comic for the future so I have done minimal designing for that so I just had to kind of stick that in and hope for the best and if they don't like it then I'm sorry but that's all I had. The final section was a final piece of work which I used my comic that I made in college. When you are doing your portfolio sometimes you're gonna have to use old work. Looking at my comic that I made. Some of the drawings make my skin crawl. Like I do not want to put them in my portfolio but it has to be done because it's the biggest project that I did and it is probably something I should be proud of because I mean I made a comic in like a month so because I feel like as an artist you always feel like you need to show them your newest work. I did actually sneak around this by adding another section at the bottom which just said other work and I just put some of my favourite pieces there because I thought might as well sneak that in since they said I could have more than 20 pieces. The next step was to just create any new work that you might need. Now that you've got all your work ready, it's time to find a free, keyword free, website to use. So 
I used Weebly purely because that's what I used in college, so it's sort of what I'm comfortable with. Okay, so now I'm gonna go through my tips for making an online portfolio. We're gonna go to a screen capture now, so... Bye. Hey, so it's the part we've all been waiting for, the part where we don't have to look at my face. So yeah, this is my portfolio and I'm just gonna talk you through it and give some of my tips. So straight away I have this watercolour piece I did and I mainly put this here to brighten up my portfolio because as we go down you'll see that it starts to get quite grayscale and there isn't a lot of colour. So I just wanted this here to kind of brighten it up. And this piece actually leads me on to my first bit of advice which is to give every piece its moment. And by that I just mean don't be afraid of letting one piece take up an entire column. I feel like it's very easy to want to downsize every piece and squish it all up in one place, but it looks a lot more professional if you don't. Also, when you do downsize your pieces, a lot of the time the picture quality will go down and you don't want that. So scrolling down you'll see that it's a lot of sketchbook work at first, so this is just designing. But a lot of the time I did actually merge different pieces together. So for example, those two environment pieces were separate, but I merged them together to look like a sketchbook spread. The storyboards were also put together and then finally the character design I took all the separate images and then stuck them together and another tip is to edit any images off of the website you're using because I know that Weebly does have an editing section but I've noticed if you do edit anything on there it really reduces the quality and it kind of sucks so I just say do it on something else I used paint tool side just because I have it so another piece of advice that I have is to make sure that all of your images line up you may have to do this manually on the website. I know that on Weebly you can shift and hold the line in between and then you can kind of move them however you want but mainly it's just important to make sure they line up at the top and then at the bottom again and then both along the sides so this can either be really easy or really difficult depending on your images but i think it's worth it just because it looks a bit more professional if it all lines up well also you'll see that everything is separated by titles and i think that helps to kind of space out everything also on weebly there is a option to add spaces which i always like to do and there's the fucking fan <laughs> So then we have my current project, which is the first time that I use text. So obviously depending on what you're applying for, they may want you to write stuff out. I know in my graphic design portfolio, I had to write a lot more than I did for this one. But my main advice for that is to make sure you're always using the same font and make sure each body of text is the same size. So yeah, here's another example of me editing something together to make it look a bit more interesting. So I have Pinterest boards for this comic and I just took a lot of stuff off that and stuck it all together to make it look like I'd made a mood board for it. And then finally we have my comic at the end. So obviously explain anything that needs explaining. So for this piece, I just explained that this is a more recent thing because she doesn't really look like that in the comic. So I thought it would be a bit confusing. So this is the other work section that I mentioned before, which is where I just kind of put anything that I like the look of or thought that shows my thought process a bit better. Um, here is another example of me editing things together. Fun fact, this challenge was actually almost my first ever YouTube video, but I never filmed the voiceover for it, so it didn't happen. <laughs> So yeah, never be afraid to edit your images or alter them to however you want them to look because at the end of the day it's your work and you can do whatever you want with it. And yeah, that is it for my portfolio and my advice. So yeah, the only thing that I have to do now is to actually send it. And at the moment I'm waiting for my ID number because they didn't actually send it to me, which is kind of frustrating because I just want to get it done. I guess that's it for this video. I hope it's been somewhat useful. I don't know if it actually has. If you are applying for uni or you already have, then I wish you luck and I hope that you get onto the course that you want to do. Um, wish me luck because I'm definitely going to need it. <laughs> and... Yeah, that's genuinely it. So hopefully I will see you next week and not next month. I just... I, I, blah, 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 blah.